Hello folks, welcome back for one more video for tonight. So in this one we'll be setting up these checkpoints. So we'll set them up to where when you pass it, it lights on fire to let you know which one's active. And then when you pass the next one, the other one goes out. And then if you fall in the water, or, well you won't be able to fall in the water yet, but we'll make it to where you can respawn at them when you, you know, when we set up that function later. So let's jump into it. So the first thing we want to do is create the actual checkpoint blueprint actor. So under the blueprints, I'm going to put it in its own folder. And I'm going to create a new folder called checkpoint in the blueprints folder. So I'm going to open that up, right click, create a blueprint class of an actor called checkpoint underscore BP gonna open that up and we want to add a few things to this first of which being the actual visual representation of the checkpoint that torch thing so we'll add a static mesh and the static mesh I'm going to use is a uh, part of the advanced village pack so I'm going to be using this that's not it Where you at? You could use these lights if you wanted to, but I'm going to use this torch. So it's SM Torch Variety 1 or Variance 1, whatever. So I'm going to set it into the slot, which you don't have to find it in the browser. You could just type in SM Torch from that little drop down thing. It does the same thing. What we want to add next is what the player will actually uh, interact with that registers the torch active which is a sphere collision we'll set that up to encompass the whole thing pretty well I'll say 150 on the radius something like that then we want to add a particle system this will be the the fire that lights up when we pass it so we, this won't actually be the fire it'll be the the placeholder so the fire knows where to spawn basically so we'll put it in place f put it wherever looks good to you and then we want to just clear that back out because we want it to be empty so that when we spawn the fire later we can use this uh, transform information to spawn it at the right spot next thing we'll need is a, a point for the character to actually you know teleport to when they respawn so I'm going to highlight the static mesh one more time I'm going to add a scene component I'm going to call that the TP point because that's where you'll actually respawn and I'll drag this out just a little ways from the thing because we don't want to spawn the character inside the uh, the torch the collision might get messed up and then just so that we have a visual representation in the world of where that's at I'm going to add a sphere not the collision but the sphere and then I'm going to zero out its location so that it's right there attached to it. And it's a little big, so I'm going to set it to about 0.25. Because we don't want it to be... We just want it to be able to be visible in the world. So if I pull this out into the world right now, you can see... Nothing. Where is it at? Should be visible, but it is not. Oh, <laughs> I'm an idiot. Okay, it helps if you actually pull out the blueprint. I pulled out just the mesh. <laughs> All right, there it is. I was wondering also why it didn't have that thing around it. So you'll see it's right there. But right now, if I press play, you'll see that it's still visible. God, I need to clean some of that out. 
you'll see it's still visible in the world. We don't want it to be visible when you're in play mode, just when you're in level building mode. So with the sphere selected, you can go into the details panel and go down to rendering, and we want to set it to hidden in game. So that when, if we press play now, now it's gone. But it'll still be able to register all the data from it. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so now what we want to do is we will go into the checkpoint and then we will go into the event graph, empty all that out, and we're going to set up two custom events. One called activate, what was that? One called activate, another one called deactivate. So for the activate, we want to spawn an emitter at location. The emitter we want to spawn is that fire emitter that we saw just a little bit ago. And the location, we want to grab out that particle system we set up, get its transform, its world transform, which is all of this information. Then we will split this struct pin, which gives us access to all those variables, and then just hook it up just like that. And then off the return value, we will promote that to a variable called fire. So that in our deactivate, we can right click and get an is valid node which an is valid is basically, it's kind of like a branch, but it checks to see if an actor exists in the level. So if it doesn't exist, it won't do anything, but if it does, then it'll do something. It's just a, a little safety check to make sure it doesn't try to fire off code, but not being able to find the actor it's looking for. So we'll drag out that particle system. So when we deactivate, it'll first check to make sure that this exists, and if it does, then we can just destroy it. Destroy that component. Just like that. And that's all we need to do in the actual torch. So now in the third, in the, in the player blueprint, we need to open that up. Throw it away so it'll stop dinging in y'all's ear. And we want to, in the viewport, highlight the mesh, and we want to add a sphere collision around her. This is what's going to interact with that other sphere collision and register that you've passed it. That's a little big. I'm going to go 75. Register that you've passed a checkpoint. So these two collisions will kind of interact with each other, and then we can transfer the data back and forth. So in the event graph, we want to highlight that sphere and go down and add a begin overlap event. Remember it's the second one in the list. If you need to pull this out just to make sure you got the right one, go for it. So on begin overlap, we want to promote, oh wait, we want to see if it has a tag, which we haven't set up in the checkpoint yet, but we will go back and do that. So we want to see, we want to see if it has a tag of a checkpoint. The reason we're going to use a tag is just to make sure that it only interacts with this specific item. So if it does, we'll add a branch. If it does, then we want to promote this to a variable called current checkpoint. Then we want to get all of the checkpoints in the level. So to do that, we will get all actors of class, the class being the checkpoint. This will get every single instance of the item in the level and arrange it into an array. From that array, we want to do a for each loop. What this will do is it'll fire through every single one of these and do something based off of, you know, uh, certain variables. 
So for the array element, we want to find out if it's equal to the one we just set as our current checkpoint. So we'll drag out from the array element and do an equal sign so that we can compare this class to this class. And with a branch, we will say if it is, then we want to activate, call that activate function. And if not, then we want to deactivate so that it'll turn off the fire at the one we're not interacting with. So let's add that tag into this real quick by going back into its blueprint, highlighting the checkpoint at the top. In the details panel, you can search the details, type in tag, it'll pull this up. We'll add right there with that plus sign and we'll type in checkpoint. So now, let's see if I add one here, let's see, one over here, and one right here. We'll test it real quick. So this one lights up now, and then that one lights up, the other one did not go off. Why you not go off, bro? Fire is valid, if it is valid, destroy. You're activating right? Why are you not deactivating right? Oh. Let me try deleting it. Maybe I gotta refresh the blueprint. Let's see. It's activating. And now it's deactivating. Alright. I just needed to pull out a fresh copy of it, I guess. All right, so now it is setting its or it's lighting appropriately. Let me check. Yeah, we got time. Oop, there it is. All right. Well, now that that's working the way it's supposed to, we want to be able to when the character needs to respawn, find the one that we need and teleport to it in the, you know, like it's respawning. So inside the player blueprint, we're gonna create another, a custom event called respawn. And then when this function is called, we want to, again, get all actors of class the class being the checkpoint so that we can look through all of them and find the one we're looking for but this time when it creates the array of actors we want to do a for each loop with break the difference in this one is we only want it to search through and find the specific one we're looking for and then when it's done we can just go ahead and cut its process so I'm gonna create another custom event called break Hook it right there to that. And then just like before, we're gonna drag out the array element, get an equal sign, and find the current checkpoint that we have set up. We'll add a branch so that when it finds the one we're looking for, we can get a variable out of it. The variable we need right now is the TP point that we set up. I'm gonna set that right here. So once it finds the one we want, then we want to call that break function. That way it stops the loop. Then you'll see at the bottom right here where it says completed, this is what's fired after it finishes doing everything or it it's broken and then it'll fire the complete. So what we want it to do is we want to set our actor's location. Oh, I put an S. Set actor location. So we'll hook that directly to the completed. We want to get that TP points world location. And then we want to add the vector. We want to drag off here and add. Because if we just go directly to where it's at, you'll see how she kind of has this grid halfway through her. And if we just put her right here she'll just be halfway in the ground 
So we need to add a little bit to the Z vector so that she's above that. So in here, we're going to drag this back just a little bit. We want to add 90 to it. Because if you look at her mesh, then you'll see she, oh, 95. We'll try 90 and make sure it works, but it, it worked in the, pre, in the preview mode, so we'll, it should. All right, and that's pretty much all you gotta do. So it's getting all the actors of the checkpoint, it's finding the one that we have as our current checkpoint, then it's breaking its loop process, and it's setting our location to that teleport point inside that checkpoint. So I'm going to set up a quick uh, function off of the Q key and that's just going to call the respawn function just to test it. <coughs> so I'll set one up and then if I press Q she respawns right at it. If I go to this one Why are you playing with me, fool? You were just working a second ago. Alright, well, let's try it one more time. It lights up. Right, it lights up. And that one stays lit. What the hell? It was just working a second ago. Were you not? Check my notes over here real quick. Oh, it's creating multiple instances of it. Okay, so we want to back up off of the activate inside the checkpoint blueprint. We want to drag that fire out. And we'll do that same is valid check because if it otherwise if you overlap it uh, then it'll once you overlap it again it'll create another one so if the fire is not valid then we want to create it and if it is we don't want it to do that again so now let's give it a shot so it lights up it extinguishes there we go all right, we're on the right track now. So now she'll teleport to that one when I press the Q key, and if I activate this one, now she'll teleport to that one. So that's a pretty basic checkpoint system. So you can set these throughout the level. Like if you got a challenging platform section coming up, you can like I'll set one right up here. Uh, set one. right there and then once I get to it if I can get to it oh, almost problem is I didn't line up that point oh hey she's standing on nothing okay <laughs> so now the reason that's visible is because you can kind of rotate that to be able to put it exactly where you want it and yeah that's all looking well and good So that's a pretty basic checkpoint system. Uh, in the next one, we'll actually start building a level for us to go through and putting up the end level feature of uh, you know making sure you got all the gems before you can able to exit. So see you in the next one. Bye.